Hey guys, you're watching Jay's Two Cents, and I am, of course, Jay. But who else would I be? If I were somebody else, that would be entirely weird. But anyway, recently NVIDIA launched its brand new 750 and 750 Ti graphics cards. So that's what we're going to look at today. Gigabyte has sent me one of their 750 Ti WinForce Edition graphics cards. And this thing is pretty powerful for given what it is. So let's go ahead and talk about what this is, how it performs, and maybe this card is right for you. Who knows? Okay, so when it comes to the construction of this card, Gigabyte is widely known for their ultra durable series. And that's exactly what they've implemented here on this custom PCB. It does feature their ultra durable design, which are solid caps, upgraded compare, uh, MOSFETs and chokes. And it's got their, uh, what they call their low RDS MOSFETs. So the power delivery to the graphics card GPU is very, very clean. Now, what makes it also unique is the fact that it's got their WinForce design on there. But what I think is really interesting about this card and what makes it really cute is the fact that it's so damn small, but we'll get to that in a second. When it comes to other features on the card, of course, it's supporting uh, DirectX 11.2 API, as well as it has two gigabytes of onboard GDDR5 memory and has a 128 bit memory bus. So the specs are incredibly impressive. In fact, I don't even know what the stock clock is on this thing. It doesn't even say on the box what the stock clock is on this, but obviously we'll check that out when we do the benchmarks. Now, one thing I do find kind of incredibly interesting regarding this graphics card is their video output options. It has a DVI-I, a DVI-D, and two HDMI. You would find that there is no DisplayPort output, which is kind of curious because of the fact that it does feature 4K resolution at 60 Hertz support. But in order to get that resolution, you have to use two HDMI outputs. Now, I don't know, I don't know why they went that route. I'm sure they have their reasons, but there's no display port on this, which would natively support 4K a little bit better. Anyway, let's go ahead and talk about uh, the physical properties of the card itself. When you open the box, everything will fall right out. No, I'm just kidding guys. The driver disc and manual popped out on me there. So anyway, there they are there. But as always, I recommend tossing those aside and going on, what did I hit? Tossing those aside and going over to their website and downloading the most up-to-date drivers. Just toss the software, quite honestly. Now also contained on that driver disc is their OC Guru uh, overclocking utility. Once again, you can grab the most recent version of that from their website as well. Now, when you open the box, you're gonna find some accessories in here. The cutest little four pin Molex to six pin PCI Express cable. Again, just toss that and you'll find the graphics card itself. Now, when it comes to the graphics card, I'm serious. This is just the cutest little thing I've ever seen. It's so adorable. Look, it's so small, they can only fit two of the fans on there. If you guys you know, typically there's three on here, but we've got two of the WinForce fans on here. Uh, very, it's just so adorable. It's also got one copper heat pipe that extends on the top as well as the bottom here. You will find that it requires one PCI Express uh, six pin connector. And you also have obviously your PCI 3.0 uh, slot on there. Now on the top for connectivity, you'll notice that there is no SLI bridge. Unfortunately, this card does not support SLI. So that's pretty much all we're gonna talk about here when it comes to the specs of the card. I mean, you can see right there, you do have your two HDMI ports and your two DVI ports. So let's go ahead and stop talking about the card and let's go ahead and stick it inside my test rig and see exactly what kind of performance we get out of this Gigabyte WinForce GTX 750 Ti. So I don't spend a whole lot of time playing around with the mid and low end cards. And let's face it, for what it is, given where it is placed in the lineup, the 750 Ti is a low end card. It's, a, it's an entry level budget solution is what it is. Now with a stock clock of 1176 megahertz, this thing overclocked to 1,311 megahertz. And what's kind of cool about that is the fact that it would have gone farther. And I'm almost positive of that because I maxed out the sliders. I couldn't go any farther. But the overclock on this was just asking for more. Now it didn't do like fantastic in benchmarks or anything, but I mean, as I've mentioned before, when it comes to benchmarks and things, they're just a number. They're just a number that some chart you know, populated based on average frames per second of a synthetic loop of something that's happening. So it doesn't, it's not real world representation of what to expect gaming wise with a card. Now, when it comes to Battlefield 4, you guys know I like to stress the card as hard as possible. So I always test 
the first test on the Ultra preset, and then I try and find where the card really fits in. Now, this is naturally not an Ultra preset type of card, but I figured since this is a 1080p test, we might as well just go ahead and see what it does. Now, the card averaged 44 frames per second on Ultra, with a max frames per second of 66 and a minimum of 23. Now, I'd say with the minimum, it wasn't, it, they must have only happened a couple of times because when I was playing the game, I didn't really notice it. In fact, it wasn't even affecting my gameplay at all. I was still owning in the game. I was getting immersed in the game and I wasn't noticing lags or, or, or frame spikes or frame dips that were so significant that my, that my brain being used to playing on high-end cards thought, oh, this really sucks. I mean, it was obvious that, that the average frame rate was lower but it was still very, very playable and smooth. The frame latency felt really good on the card. Now, I wasn't actually measuring frame latency, but my perception of it was that it was very, very good. So I wanted to see how it does at the recommended settings level for Battlefield 4, which happened to be a mixture of medium and high. Now, we got an average of 68 frames per second. 68 frames per second average, with a minimum of 57, and a maximum of 94 averages. That 1080p on a tiny little card like this that never got any hotter than 52 degrees Celsius, never even heard the card, it was so quiet, that it got to the point to where I kind of stopped letting my benchmark run because I let it just kind of, I have to hit a, a key bind and it will run for a minute and then it will do average frames per second and then I just kind of keep it going and just keep hitting it and he, while I'm playing. And on 64 player map, Parcel Storm, man, these are the kind of numbers I was getting. So. It's kind of flipped my world upside down because I'm realizing that cards are getting so much stronger with so much less resources necessary, at least when you're gaming at a resolution like 1080p. Now I'm not gonna put 1200p or anything higher than 1080p at this card. It's not where the card is aimed or placed in the market. And if you're, if you're gaming on something lower like 10, a 1050, 1600 by 1050, or even a 720p monitor, my God, you could play ultra preset maxed out and just be butter smooth. But the, the super efficiency of this card using less than 80 watts of power, only needing one six pin connector. And if you're on a tight budget, I would be sure hell bent to find a better card for $150. I mean, 150 bucks. In the past, I would have said the R9 270 was a really good bargain at 179, but we all know cryptocurrency destroyed that market. So the 750 Ti, man, it's no powerhouse, but it sure as heck surprised me on how well it performed. So guys, tell me what you think about this card. I mean, I know it's really new. It shows us that we have a lot to expect out of Maxwell if they're able to pull this kind of power out of this tiny, tiny little, really is no other way to explain it. It is a tiny card. So guys, I've been Jace Two Cents. I hope this review has helped you make a decision if you were looking at buying this card. And as always, I'll see you on the website and I'll see you in my next video.